Hallelujah. have your Bibles here, we're going to turn to the book of 1 John and chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Oh, really thank you. Amen. For being here, attentive in the house of God. <clears throat> 1 John chapter 2. Amen. So we're going to continue in this series of training up godly children at the Holy Ghost. That's messages and words that's helping us as parents and as children mm -hmm. to lead our children in the way that they should go so that they, when they are older, they will not depart from it. Helping us to be better parents. Amen. Examples. Last week, we talked about role models and imitating Christ that are uh, Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verse 1, I believe. If you then be risen with Christ, seek so 15 is what we'll read. And we'll tiling this. Don't be worldly. Don't be worldly. Let's <clears throat> read in 2 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. <clears throat> For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but... He that doeth the will of God <clears throat> abideth. And in the image of Christ, help us to do your will. Help us to know it. Help us to walk in your ways, Lord God. Speak to us, amen. Reveal to us your truth. Help us to just do that which is pleasing in your sight. Oh, God, anoint this time by your presence and power. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So as we talk about loving not the world, in Jesus' name. Today we're going to talk about a few things. What is worldly or worldliness or worldly minded? What is it? How that, how it is affected, how it affects us, how it affects <clears throat> our children, or how it takes effect on us. Some of the consequences of it. We're going to talk about some biblical warnings. Amen and how mind and perspective, how we should be, what type of mind we should have. Okay, so worldliness. Love not the world. Worldliness is a popular word that we use. You know, Bible uses the term carnal. But we say, Christians talk about worldly, being worldly. Don't be worldly. This person's too worldly. Oh, you're worldly. Carnal. What does worldly mean? Well, it means secular. It means uh, temporal, which you can sense the word temporary in there. It's pertaining to this world or life in contradistinction, the life that is to come, which is eternal. So we talk about worldly affairs, worldly pleasures, uh, worldly estate, and Titus 2 talks about worldly lust. So to be worldly or to be of the world is to have a disposition or in, an inclination uh, to be overly indulged or a consideration of worldly things. To have your mind on things of the world. Temporary things, which would be almost seemingly all things since we're in the world and we're, we're living in the world and we operate in the world and our bodies are presently in the world all the time and we live in our bodies. And so... Uh, uh, John Mike, move your seat and, and, and sit there. Sit there. So that's what it means to be worldly. Worldly lust. 
It's very simple, not, nothing deep there about what it is to be worldly. To be devoted to, to have a consideration, to, be, to have a leaning towards <clears throat> being of the world. That's what it means to be worldly. So if a man is more, if, is he, if he's so focused, if he's so concerned and consumed about his life in this world and his existence, his connection to worldly things, material things, uh, money, fleshly things, pleasures, things that concern pleasing and gratifying the body and gratifying the five senses, sight, smell, touch, feeling, hearing. These are the things that make a man worldly. I mean, and we're not supposed to be worldly. 1 John 2.15 says, Love not the world. Don't set your affections on the world. <clears throat> Don't love the world. Neither the things <clears throat> that are in the world. So we're born here to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. So let's name some things that are in the world that the world, brother people seem to love, right? Money, love the love of money. Money is good, money can be a blessing. Uh, Solomon said money answereth all things in the natural. He said, he said money answereth all things. My addition is in, in the natural, of course, because it doesn't answer the spiritual things. Uh, cars, things that you can feast your eyes upon. Cars, right? Big houses that present to you the idea of comfort and pleasure and ease and satisfaction and pride, right? Food, right? That's the that's main thing that people get with their money, food, because without which they will die, right? It's to fill their bellies and to fill their appetite, right? Just, just material <clears throat> things. Fancy, comfortable clothing. Right, so they can to, to puff themselves up and for their pride and for you know an unnecessary type of indulgence. So these are things that are of the world that the Father tells us not to love. He says, Love not the world, neither the things. The things. He didn't say some things. He says, Love not the things <clears throat> that are in the world. Because Jesus said, No man can serve two masters. You are the Serve the one and hate the other, or else you will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So you cannot love God, love God, love the Father. Lust of the flesh <clears throat> and the lust of the eyes. And the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So that is what is of the world. Colossians 3.1 says, If ye then be risen with Christ... Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above. So your mind, uh, your heart, uh, the things that affect your affections and your emotions, which is your mind, needs to be set on things above, not on the things of this world. Amen. Oh. Amen. For you are dead and your life... <clears throat> is hidden with Christ and God. This world is temporary. This world is fleeting. This world will not abide forever. Neither will you in this world. <clears throat> so that's why we have to seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Don't set your affections on things of this world. Mm -hmm. But how does to do that? And how ought we tell the world to do that? You know, you're living in a, what, right before we were saved, uh, me, I was complete worldly, like everyone else. Set, living for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, my own pride and ego, and how much I could get, to, and how far I could go in the natural. But one thing that obliterated that wrong perspective, that wrong aim that I had in life was, <clears throat> pardon, the word of God. God. The Word of God gives you the right perspective. So we understand that to possess the appropriate and the correct perspective of the world and to view the world through the right lenses, we got to use the Bible, the Word of God. This has to be our filter. Because many, mostly, all the worldly people 
are consumed with this world mm -hmm. through what? The lies of Satan. <clears throat> Worldly people, their life has become one fast, sensual, pleasure-seeking excursion resulting in hedonism and requiring, re requiring hell at the last. <clears throat> Are you following? Amen. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the world is consumed in pleasure seeking exploits. And it results in hedonism because they live <clears throat> to please the flesh. You're, if you're living just to please your body, if you're living just to satisfy your natural appetite, it you will result it, it, it results in hedonism. And you will require hell. Hell is where you're going to go. Revelation 4.11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things. <clears throat> and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Revelation 4.11. Glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure they are created. You were created... <clears throat> To give God pleasure, not to give yourself pleasure. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Turn to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 says, Who hath delivered us, speaking of Jesus, from the power of darkness, or the Father, hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God. Verse 7. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live under the Lord, and whether we die, we die under the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord. Verse 9, for to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Now before Christ died, he was still Lord. He created all things he created both for him. And he lived and died for the world so that the, he would be Lord. Amen. The world would serve him and honor him. <clears throat> Put their faith and trust in Christ, saying he lived for them. So now, the lie. Satan is a liar. So that's why this word is deceived and confused, because they have believed the lie. John 8, 44, Jesus said, You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father he will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he lie, there's no truth in him. How does that go? John 8, 44. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. <clears throat> so the devil is a liar. The devil has deceived the world and made them think that worldly things, the things in the world, can give them <clears throat> some pleasure or some satisfaction or can meet the needs of their souls for which only God can satisfy. The void, they think, can be filled by things in the world, by material things, by natural things, but it cannot. It is not made to be so. Ecclesiastes 5.10 says, He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, mm -hmm. nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. Verse 11, When goods increase, they are increased that eat them. And what good is there to the owner of the realm, saving the beholding of them with, with their eyes? So the world is in a big rat race, trying to get heap up treasure and gold and silver and more material things for which they cannot be satisfied. And, and the more they get, the more they would get. Mm -hmm. And it's never.
never. It's a it's a rat race. It's a it's a it's a like a Ferris wheel, a ferret on a wheel, <clears throat> spinning and spinning and spinning and going nowhere. Ecclesiastes six seven says, "All the labor of man is for his mouth, and yet the appetite is not filled." Man, so, so man, the worldly person, is living for the lust of the flesh to please their body. To gratify the desires of their natural body that they're living in, and their appetite is huge and cannot be exhausted, and they're striving to please themselves. All their labor for the appetite, and yet the appetite is never, ever, ever filled. It's not meant to be filled. I mean, your spiritual man can be filled, though. Hallelujah. Proverbs 23, 5 says, Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. So, there is an unsatisfying nature in this world that is vain, that can only be satisfied, amen, with spiritual things. Now, money is not the only thing, but money is the main focus that gets people distracted. Yes, there's prosperity in God. That's a biblical blessing. Yes, it is very biblical that the Bible says in, in 2nd or 3rd John, I wish above all that your soul would be in health, and that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. So prosperity, biblical promises, uh, wealth, riches, honor, Distinction are all can be blessings from God, and it is biblical, and it is for the saints to have when we have because we have the right perspective. We understand we are not gonna love it. We don't love these things, right? We don't love money. We love the Father. Amen. And, and it's all God's. Hallelujah. And it can all belong to us. The saints of by faith. But if you have a worldly mind and you're living in a flesh and you're still operating and bound by your worldly nature, it's just going to destroy you. <sighs> Ephesians 5, uh, sorry, Psalm 62, 10 says, trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, <clears throat> set not your heart upon them. You got it? If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. So we're talking about raising up godly children. So we have to raise up our children, amen, teach to them that don't love the world. Tell them, don't love the world. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Love not the world. Money is a blessing. Money answers all things in the natural. Yes, money provides comfort and, and, and <clears throat> some degree of pleasure to a high level but it doesn't answer the spiritual things it doesn't answer it doesn't give you righteousness right it doesn't fulfill your soul it's not going to open up the gates in heaven when your body dies and you stand before deep God and Jesus Christ <clears throat> turn to Ephesians mm -hmm. chapter 5 if you will so we have to teach and instruct <clears throat> our children. <clears throat> Keep on guard that we're not worldly ourselves. Amen. Ephesians 5.5 5 says, For this ye know, that no whoremonger, <clears throat> nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So covetousness we're talking about. So the worldly constantly is on a, a course of coveting, trying, seeking, lusting after something that is not theirs, something that is someone else's, uh, suffering <clears throat> uh, jealousy and... Uh, <clears throat> but we're talking about coveting. And jealousy. And so why is covetousness idolatry? Why is a covetous man an idolater? Because a covetous man 
seeks and longs for and lives for that. He longs for that. He, he worships money because he seeks to satisfy the, uh, the imagination of his mind, the imagination of his heart. He seeks to satisfy his imagination through money, through the attainment of money, through the attainment mm -hmm. of these material things. When he ought to seek God for the satisfaction, he ought to seek God for the satisfaction <coughs> of his longing. Right. God ought to be who he longs for, to be satisfied, to be pleased, to be happy, to receive the joy. But he imagines, he imagines that if I get this big house, if I get this five cars, if, if I get a giant bank account, if I can drive, be driving the best car of the block, if I can get that Porsche, that Lamborghini, if I can be the biggest YouTube star, if I can be the biggest <clears throat> TikTok star, and they get all this smile and receive the joy. So now, he's, so now he seeks, he seeks money, and he seeks pride, and he seeks worldly attainment because he thinks that will give him the greatest fulfillment. Mm -hmm. So that is his supreme desire. Right. So therefore he is an idolater. But when you wake up and you understand that Jesus Christ, amen, and his love and his glory and his peace and his precious blood and the word of God and the truth and the Bible, all these things truly give you the joy and the satisfaction. That's why we serve and love God, because we see that he is the one that fulfills our hearts. A covetous man is an idolater. That's Bible. Amen. Because, but saints, we're blessed and we're happy and we're content in God with where we're at. And if God blesses our business, if God blesses us with windfalls, if God grants us an inheritance, if God gives us the riches of the wicked, we're content there. Man, we don't love it. Hallelujah. First Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, coveted after, that word coveted again, longing, lusting, thirsting mm -hmm. for that, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through He's the Father to gratify God, love Him, seek His kingdom, and these necessary things will, will be added unto you. They'll right. be added unto you. Right. God will give them to you Praise. because God loves you, and God has the best plan for your life, not you, and definitely not the devil. Amen. Luke 12, 15, and Jesus, and He said unto them, Take heed and beware, beware, watch out. Of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Right? So, so these are some warnings. So you're going somewhere, right? You're all going somewhere. We're all going somewhere. It's too